Hello. Shrikant, you want to do Sir, Hello. Only Mandala Mandala Mukhar. Sir. Only three of us. Oh, yes, sir. Hello. 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 Sir, shall we start or shall we wait? Okay, sir, phone share with the Urbana, no Jano money. Pedro, hello, hello.
And we will start the class. Everybody will join later. At least six members are there now. Yeah, please. Yes. Everybody is getting the screen? No. Now, sir? Yes. Yes. Good morning, everybody. And a happy new year to everybody. Has joined. Uh, today we are talking about postural puncture headache, which is a long, elusive uh, problem for us since the inception of the spinal anesthesia. So, coming to the introduction, uh, postural headaches following interventions that disrupt the skin integrity are most commonly labeled postural puncture headache. According to the international classification of uh, headache disorders, it is more of a meningeal puncture headache than a dural puncture headache because we are that's why because we are uh, injuring both dura and arachnoid in order to get the csm so it is more of a meningeal headache than a only as it is a misnomer to call it as a post dural puncture headache because we are injuring both arachnoid and dura so in spite of all these uh, more than 100 years of uh, spinal anesthesia, we, st we still know, uh, don't know the, uh, we have a poor understanding regarding this uh, postural puncture headache. And uh, the, the first it was, uh, at first it was uh, uh, discovered by Dr. August Weir, who is the pioneer of, uh, and the father of regional anesthesia. And, uh, he is the first patient in the in the first patient which he has a successful spinal anesthesia in 1898. Most, uh, after the procedure, the patient complained of a headache, nausea, and vomiting. The nausea and vomiting are subsided, but the headache didn't subside for at least one week. And, uh, after that, he and his uh, uh, assistant, Dr. August Children, continued this uh, work and they self inflicted. Post uh, their uh, spine, spine uh, lumbar punctures, and he uh, he experienced the same feeling, uh, which he described. I had a, in his own words, I had a feeling of very strong pressure on my skull, and became rather dizzy when I stood up rapidly from the chair. All the symptoms vanished once I laid when I lay down flat, but returned when I stood up. I was forced to take bed, take to bed, and remained there for nine days because all the manifestations recurred as soon as they got up. These symptoms finally resolved after nine days of the lumbar function. That's his own words. That's how the patient also feels after post uh, once he gets a postural puncture headache. So the incident, coming to the incidence, incidence of PDPH varies. We can also call it as MPH, meningeal puncture headache. So it is uh, as much as 36%, more than 36% following lumbar puncture. There are a uh, lot of criteria that uh, what causes uh, what causes the increased incidence of uh, PDPH. We will go into that later. And it is only zero to ten percent following spinal anesthesia. You have to differentiate between lumbar puncture and like spinal anesthesia. Both are lumbar punctures, but some lumbar punctures are therapeutic and diagnostic. But in spinal anesthesia, we are giving only. Uh, using small needles compared to the other uh, lumbar puncture techniques. So 81% of uh, accidental dura puncture following epidural injections. So 81% of the patients will get uh, postural puncture headache in, after ADPs. The rate of ADPs should be less than 0.5%, but uh, in pregnancy, their, their, their uh, incidence is quite uh, variable. Uh, uh, as low as 0.04% to 6%, coming to an average of 1.5%. And in that 1.5%, uh, 
more than 75% of the obstetric people with who have an uh, accident uh, dural puncture will develop PDPH. And other, uh, as I said earlier, uh, other uh, causes of uh, this PDPH are myelography and therapeutic or diagnostic lumbar punctures. So, non pregnant females having approximately twice the risk of PDPH compared to the male, male patients. The uh, experience and the comfort and the skill of the uh, person or the anesthesiologist who is giving the spinal anesthesia or doing a lumbar puncture will also affect the uh, development of PDPH. Use of ultrasound guided and uh, uh, regional anesthesia techniques for ultrasound guided spinal anesthesia and epidural anesthesia had decreased the risk of and decreased the incidence of PDPH. <clears throat> relationships relationship among variables and meningeal puncture headache. Factors that can increase the incidence of headache after spinal puncture is age. Age means uh, in patients who are less than 10 years of age, they are less prone to develop uh, meningeal puncture headaches compared to more than adolescents and younger females, younger males, younger, younger I mean, not males, and females, younger people. But the incidence increases, uh, decreases after 50 years of age. Older, older age group will have a less incidence of uh, PDPH compared to the, the adolescent and younger age group. As I said earlier, females are more prone to PDPH compared to males. And needle size is also, as you know, everybody knows needle size will also predict the chances of getting a PDPH. So larger needles will have higher incidence and smaller needles will have a lower incidence, almost nil incidence as we are using uh, using 27 and 26 gauge needles for spinal anesthesia with these needles. So needle bevel, as you know, the needle bevel position is also uh, should be in parallel to the long axis of the new, uh, new, uh, spine so that the incidence of, uh, that also decreases the incidence of PDPH. And in pregnancy, uh, accidental dural punctures are more in labor analgesia when you are administering epidural analgesia uh, in pregnant, pregnant women. And dural punctures, the number of times we attempted the uh, dural punctures is also uh, uh, has a variable which predicts the development of PDPH. Factors that does not increase the incidence of uh, headache of spinal puncture are incidence of catheters or a continuous spinal anesthesia or a continuous epidural anesthesia or uh, for epidural anesthesia will not have any PDPH but continuous spinal anesthesia and timing of ambulation. Coming to the pathophysiology, pathophysiology of PDPH is incompletely understood till now, but there are certain theories that uh, it will be, it is due to meningeal traction or it is due to uh, decrease in this, uh, uh, decrease in the cerebrospinal fluid causing uh, meningeal tractions and, and also due to the dural puncture which are, which are pain sensitive, in space, pain sensitive structures. So cerebral, cerebrospinal fluid is practically formed, as we know, in the thoracic plexus at a rate of 0.35 ml per minute. So, and it is absorbed by arachnoid villa. Total CSF volume is 50, 150 ml, and out of which 50% is extra dural only, extra cranial only. So, the normal lumbar puncture in a lying down position is 5 to 15 centimeters of water, but in a upright position, it is around 40 to 50 centimeters of water. So, loss of approximately 10% of CSF will cause PDPH. But it also uh, results when you reconstitute the death sheet. So, how do you reconstitute the death sheet? We will see later. The, uh, it is generally agreed that PDPH is due to loss of CSF in a, in a persistent creep through the meninges. And it's also said that, uh, postulated that uh, cellular arachnoid matter is perhaps more important than the more permeable and acellular dura matter because they are uh, arachnoid matter is also very sensitive and these arachnoid matter cells 
and the tight junctions of the electron matter are more important in causing in precipitating PDPH compared to the Jura matter. The so Jura matter is around 400 microns in uh, thickness and it has 80 concentric layers concentric and but arachnoid matter is only 40 microns in thickness. So you can, as uh, we all know, you have to give parallel to the neural fibers. You have to, we all think that neural fibers are more at parallel till now, but in an electronic microscopy, you can see the neural, neural fibers. These are neural fibers, which are randomly distributed. They are not in a equal plane. They are not in a, uh, uh, in a, uh, particular manner that is a parallel, they are linear or horizontal, it's not like that, they are, it's a mesh, it's a network, it's a, it's more of a net, net, uh, netted manner and it is, they are distributed unevenly. And you can see this is the electron microscopy of arachnoid matter where you can see the tight junctions known as desmosomes and, uh, and other tight junctions are also there and these arachnoid cells are uh, connected by these desmosomes. So these tight junctions will cause more uh, precipitate the incidence of uh, PDPH rather than the Jura matter. This is also the electron microscopy of uh, pinky needle causing the dural function. You can see the dural uh, edges here, which are, which are caused by the Functioning of the particles as pinky needle. This is the arachnoid functioning. As you can see, uh, Jura, Jura, this is also a Jura matter fun, uh, punctures caused by 25 gas pinky needles. These Jura matter edges, as you can see, they can approximate immediately after the, uh, uh, to some extent, compared to the arachnoid. This, this is the arachnoid. Arachnoid will not uh, come closer after the uh, puncture. But Jura is somewhat comes closer uh, at, at, at uh, places so, uh, in, after the function. So it is more, now we know that arachnoid is more, uh, uh, arachnoid matter is the cause of uh, more than Jura matter. And this is the, uh, this image is, is the neural puncture caused by a Wittaker needle, which is a, uh, pencil tip needle. As you can see, there is a separation of the dural dural fibers rather than the actual cut. And you can also see this is also same Whittaker needle, twenty-five gauge. You can see the arachnoid separation. It's more not. It's not like a cut. It's like a cavity. It's, it's the fibers are more separated than the when compared to the. Uh, Cutting needles. So coming to the pathophysiology, uh, we are as we are discussing the uh, the anatomically uh, meningeal rupture, anatomical supported term meningeal puncture headache is proposed because of the as I said earlier there is an arachnoid puncture which is causing the which is displacing the PDBH. So the actual means by which CHF CS of a uh, hypertension generates headache is somewhat controversial. But it is, uh, there is a diminished buoyant support causing because of the leak where the brain will sag, brain structure will sag resulting in pressure in the pain sensitive structures such as cranial nerves, dura, bridging veins and venous sinuses. Adenosis mediated vasodilatation may occur secondary to the diminished intracranial CSF to preserve the Monroe Kelly doctrine. So this adenosine mediated vasodilatation will also cause the headache. And there is a proposal that reflexively secondary to the traction of the intracranial vessels, uh, this adenosine pathway will cause the vasodilatation. And uh, multiple neural pathways generating the symptoms of PDBH, particularly the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, which is, if it uh, can be involved, which is causing the frontal headache. As you know, the main uh, symptom is frontal occipital headache or frontal headache or occipital headache. These are the uh, common, and if, if the cranial nerve spine and turn, I mean, uh, and vagus uh, causes the uh, 
occipital pain, cervical nerves of C1 to C3 causes the shoulder pain. And nausea is due to vagal stimulation. And uh, auditory and vestibular symptoms can cause because of the disturbances in the cochlear aqueduct the, between the perilymph and the endolymph. And visual disturbances can also occur, such as photophobia and everything. Uh, and most common extraocular margin involved is absence, as we know, it has a long intracranial course. That's why it is more, most commonly involved in any uh, uh, increase in this, if, they, if there is an increase in intracranial pressure. And intracranial vasodilatation, intracranial pressure is increased in the most commonly involved nerve is absence, as we know. So coming to the clinical presentations, typically the headache is usually begins after 12 years, 12 hours and uh, but before 48 times and rarely up to uh, five days after the uh, pharyngeal puncture is also, is also seen. But the, uh, uh, actually, uh, there is a study which was done by Vandam and Ribs. The headache symptoms within three days, within 72 hours in 84.8% of the patients. The cardinal feature of the post uh, PDPH is it's posterior in nature, headache, worsening in, uh, sorry, headache worsening in uh, upright position and relieved by rest. The International Headache Society has the diagnostic criteria for the, uh, diagnostic criteria for the describe the quality of worsening within 15 minutes after sitting and standing and improving after, within 15 minutes after lying down. The headache is always bilateral. The distribution is frontal in 25%, occipital in 27%, and both in 45%. And the, uh, the headaches are described as dull aching or throbbing or pressure. Pain. Coming to the symptoms, according to the IHS, the major symptoms are nausea, which is the most common symptom, followed by neck stiffness, tinnitus, hypoacusia, photophobia. These are the symptoms that uh, IHS has uh, uh, identified in PDPH. How to prevent PDPH? Using of 24 gauze to 27 gauze needles is an ideal choice for spinal anesthesia. That, in that way, we can prevent PDPH. If cutting tip needles are used, the bevel should be directed parallel to the long axis of the spine. And replacing the stylet after the CSF collection, but prior to the needle withdrawal, it also decreases the uh, incidence of PDPH. Continuous spinal anesthesia is reported to have a lesser incidence compared to uh, uh, normal spinal anesthesia or after uh, even after accidental uh, uh, dural puncture also in an epidural anesthesia. If you leave the catheter in a continuous spinal anesthesia, they, uh, it is having less PDPH compared to the, uh, if you remove the, you don't uh, keep a catheter. When you don't keep a catheter, the incidence of PDPH is more. Decreasing the size of epidural, size, epidural needles from 16 to 18 gauze, dec uh, decreased the incidence of PDPH by 84% to 64%. So there is a significant uh, change of almost 26, uh, 20, but 4% decrease in decrease incidence uh, in, uh, when you change the uh, needle gas by one size from uh, 20, 16 gas to 18 gas. As we are using now, all we are all using only 18 gas needles these days. So the incidence has been decreased from 88% to 64% in an accidental dural function. And the bevel orientation of the epidural needle has no significance and there is no studies were done in uh, bevel orientation regarding the epidural uh, needles. And combined, sp combined spinal anesthesia, uh, not what we are using now, but combined spinal needles which, are, which were there used to give combined spinal epidural anesthesia uh, are reported to have a lesser incidence of uh, PDPH because they use smaller gauze needles. We can use comfortably 
they use one of the needles because there will be an introducer will be there they which uh, through the epidural needle we can push the smaller gauze needle but we cannot push a smaller gauze needle through the uh, we can which we cannot use uh, directly give when when while we while we are giving a spinal drug which is uh, less than 27 28 gauze needles these needles we, we cannot use directly on the patient sometimes we they can bend but uh, in a combined spinal epidural technique these we can use them very easily as you can see these are the this is a famous picture uh, of the different kinds of sp uh, spinal needles pencil type and cutting type measures to reduce the risk of pdph after accidental dural puncture as i said earlier stylet replacement before uh withdrawing the needle we can do that that, also, that decreases subarachnoid saline injection intravenous osimpropin limiting uh, and avoid pushing in the second stage of labor which which uh, limiting the pushing uh, in the second stage of labor will also decrease the uh incidence of pdph in pregnant patients intra intrathecal catheters leaving the catheter in c2 will also decrease and epidural saline and epidural opiates and prophylactic epidural blood patch but all these uh, preventive measures are not at proven they are we are using them but their their efficacy is controversial so coming to the differential diagnosis there are uh, coming uh, differential diagnosis there are benign etiologies and more uh, complicated details in serious etiologies it can be a non specific headache it can be an exacerbation of chronic headache such as tension headache or a migraine hypertensive headache pneumocephalus sinusitis and drug related side effect spontaneous intracranial hypertension or miscellaneous causes will be there serious etiologies causes uh, etiologies are meningitis subdural hematoma subarachnoid hemorrhage pre eclampsia or eclampsia or intracranial venous sinus thrombosis so hello yeah pump continuous continuous abdominal pressure is applied with one hand that is pushy procedure this is known as pushy please mute yeah continuous abdominal pushy procedure this is continuous abdominal pressure applied with one hand and the other hand is secured against the patient's back uh for 15 to 30 seconds will decrease the headache of the uh in pdph why because we by applying the continuous pressure we are increasing the intraabdominal pressure thereby increasing the intracranial pressure and so that the uh, intracranial pressure uh improve and the headache decreases analgesic acetaminophen uh, and uh, other non steroidal and uh, antiinflammatory drugs opiates are all administered by a number of different routes to decrease pdph but uh, all are not that effective and not they are they are not having any uh, uh, clinical significance in some patients and some are Uh, uh, some are only having a placebo effect in patients so these uh, uh, we can also use tool softeners abdominal binders just to decrease the patient headache and just to increase the patient comfort but it is not they are not therapeutic they are only uh, supportive measure used as supportive measures rather than a therapeutic measure alternative measures are also there such as acupuncture or a greater occipital nerve block In a, in a in a bilateral uh, greater occipital nerve block in a occipital headache, not in a frontal headache. So, how will we proceed if a case of postural puncture headache is there? So, first of all, whether it is mild, we have to categorize whether it is mild, moderate, or severe. If the patient is not able to having a severe throbbing headache, that is severe. 
the patient is uh, can uh, he can tolerate uh, but having a mild uh, uh, headache with nausea and vomiting that is a moderate headache if the patient is having a mild headache that is a mild headache if the patient is having a mild headache you have you don't have to do anything it will just resolve on bed rest and uh, over time it will resolve if it is a moderate headache also just supportive measures such as antiemetics and other things we can give the uh, pain uh, non steroidal antiemetics or paracetamol we can give so uh, we can give or uh, then it, it, it can be resolved by pharmacological or uh, on its own also it can be resolved or caffeine we can give in moderate headaches so in uh, if the moderate headache is not resolved then we need to go for epidural blood patch in severe headaches we ha we have to combine both epidural epidural blood patch along with pharmacological methods such as uh, caffeine and estaminophen and corticosteroids and corticosteroids everything and if the epidural blood patch is also not relieving the headache after 24 hours then you can repeat the epidural blood patch again and if it is not generally after second second epidural blood patch this uh, most of the symptoms will be resolved if the uh, even after the second epidural blood patch if the symptoms are not relieved then you need to think of other techniques and you can also give third epidural blood patch but we can we will discuss about the third epidural blood patch when to give how to give in a later at a later in, in the later slide so you can see here the effectiveness of epidural blood patch compared to conservative treatment it's almost 90% of the cases are uh, uh, become asymptomatic within within 4 days with epidural blood patch compared to only 25% of the patients will will become uh, even after 7 days with conservative management for coming to the pharmacological therapies we can use methyl xanthins caffeine of a dose of 75 mg to 300 mg can be given depending upon the patient's age uh, and other gender and other factors but a single oral dose is not sufficient we need to give a cumulative doses we need to give because the half life is only 6 hours for caffeine so we need to give at least two doses for the efficacy and as i said earlier there is no convincing evidence regarding caffeine but most of the uh, compared to placebo but uh, most commonly we use it in spite of all this uh, uh, even if there is no enough evidence to uh, uh, to use caffeine still we use caffeine to treat pdph and use uh, and the use of caffeine is contraindicated in seizure disorders pregnancy induced hypertension and the patient is having any supplemental tachycardia ergot alkaloids we can also give ergot methyl ergonobin 0.5 mg orally three times a day for 24 to 48 hours to result uh, to increase the resolution of pdph corticosteroidogenics corticotropics that is uh, acth which is also known as cosentropin synthetic analog of acth and it, it is also having the same all these having the same effect to decrease the cause cerebral vasoconstriction all these act in the act only to cause cerebral vasoconstriction that's the bottom line that's the main mechanism by which they will, they will decrease the pdph and certain uh, type uh, type 1d receptor agonists such as sumatriptan and uh, other uh, certain agonists are also used but their uh, uh, use in pdph is also very limited and it is not supported by any evidence corticosteroids corticosteroids such as hydrocortisone of uh, 200 mg iv initially followed by 100 mg iv 8 hourly or 6 hourly uh, 8 hourly for six doses uh, will also decrease but it is also not corroborated by enough evidence so anti convulsants such as gabapentin and pregabalin are also used to decrease the incidence of uh, to decrease the symptoms of pdph uh, pregabalin of 75 mg twice daily gabapentin of uh, 100 to 300 mg 
twice or thrice daily can also be given. And uh, 75 mg twice daily for two days and brigabalin and followed by 150 mg for two days. Will also decrease the uh, pain scores in PDPH. So if it, coming to the epidural therapies, epidural saline, epidural saline as bolus or infusion is the initial treatment which was given, uh, I mean, uh, which, which was used initially, uh, but a 20 to 30 ml uh, epidural saline was given, but its effect is only transient. It decreases the headache, no doubt, but within 15 to 20 minutes, or within 10 minutes, uh, some cases will decrease the uh, the uh, headache will rebound. Epidural blood patch. This is the gold standard uh, treatment for PDPH. It was first discovered described by Dr. James Gorm Gormley in 1960, uh, where he administered an epidural blood patch for his patient. He's a surgeon actually, but he instead of that uh, he he administered a uh, epidural blood patch in uh, 20 ml in his patients. According to Cochrane review, the epidural blood patch is the procedure has a proven benefit for more, more uh, over conservative treatment. The main, uh, how it maintains the, decreases the, the mechanism by which it decreases the epidural headache, posterior, posterior puncture headache is due to tamponade effect. It holds the puncture site sealed and it causes the tamponade, the tamponade effect so that uh, the leakage of the cerebral spinal fluid decreases. In an MRI study of epidural puncture blood patch in five young patients, this is a very small study, only five young patients using 20 ml of blood noted to spread around four to uh, five spaces, intervertebral spaces. Uh, averaging of 3 to 3.5 above and 1.1 1 level below the puncture site, uh, below the site of injection. So always uh, you should give the, uh, the use, the site, site of injection should be at the level of uh, puncture, initial puncture or below the level of the initial puncture. So the procedure. Coming to the procedure, you need to obtain an informed consent, establish an IV, IV venous access, and uh, 18 gas saline, uh, or a large saline lock is sufficient. And uh, that is for the epidural procedure. And, and the position of the patient should be lateral because on an upright position, the headache increases. That's why the patient, the patient should be positioned in a lateral decubitus. Standard uh, using the aseptic conditions, place the epidural needed. Uh, at the site of initial epidural puncture or the site uh, or the level below the epidural puncture, collect, uh, uh, then uh, identify the uh, epidural space, then collect fresh blood uh, from the patient and without delay, steadily inject the blood uh, until he, the patient re re reports a fullness in the back or the discomfort in the back or the buttocks or the neck or a pain in the back. So until then you have to inject that 20 ml. If it is, if the patient uh, achieves, the, achieves these uh, symptoms before even 20 ml, you can stop there. Maintain the patient in the recumbent position for at least one to two hours. Infuse one liter of crystalloid uh, during that interval that there will be increased uh, intravascular uh, volume also. So instructions at discharge from a post to uh, epidural blood patch. So encourage over the counter analysis such as uh, paracetamol or ibuprofen, every, uh, anything you can give to decrease the discomfort, stool softeners, cough suppressants, uh, avoid lifting, straining or air travel for 24 hours which can cause uh, uh, abdominal pressure changes and uh, provide clear instructions how to contact the anesthesia personnel in case of emergency or in case of uh, inadequate relief. So this is how, this is the procedure, how will you give epidural uh, blood patch? 
the, the in uh, adolescents and young children the volume should be 0.2 to 0.3 ml per kg body weight contraindications of uh, epidural blood patch are similar to the actual epidural uh, analgesia such as sepsis fever coagulopathy site and patient history. special care uh, should be given in patients with uh, cns disorders such as multiple sclerosis or uh, some other cns disorders because we need to give slower injections in them to decrease the uh, irritability to the cns and risks are uh, of the epidural blood patch are all similar to the epidural analgesia, such as infection, bleeding, nerve damage, and accidental dual puncture second time also can happen. There is no role for prophylactic epidural blood patch uh, following ADP. You cannot give prophylactic epidural blood patch following ADP. There is no role for that. So alternative treatments, treatment options for epidural blood patch include Use of dextran 40, hydroxyethyl starch, or gelatin or fibrin glue in place of blood. So, then clinical uses of these alternatives and are only limited to case reports and case series, and a very small series. They are not uh, studied at a larger uh, randomized controlled trials. Persistent or recurrent PDPH. Epidural blood pressure is associated with nearly 90% symptomatic relief in uh, most of the cases, uh, but the success rate in some cases will also, is also low when the punctures are made with large needles. So you need to, uh, in that case, you need to repeat the uh, epidural blood pressure with, after 24 hours if the patient is not having any relief. And the, the, the after 24 hours, the uh, most of the patients, after the second epidural blood patch, most of the patients will Im improve uh, drastically. Even if the patient is not having any symptomatic relief and all the other causes are ruled out, you can also try for third epidural blood patch under fluoroscopy so that the placement of blood patch can be accurately done. Phenoparatine ganglion block. This is an uh, age old block where you will, uh, the parasympathetic ganglion of the phenoparatine ganglion, which is the parasympathetic ganglion, which causes vasodilatation and uh, increased uh, venous dilatation. You can block this phenoparatine ganglion with a, with a minimal invasive procedure uh, so that the parasympathetic cells are getting, are, will get blocked and the vasoconstriction achieves. So the spiropalatine ganglion located in the uh, middle nasal concha, posterior to the middle nasal concha in the nasal pharynx. So the technique is uh, the patient in the line the supine position or in a sniffing position, soak the uh, long cotton tip applicator with 2% uh, to 4% lidocaine or 0.5% rofivacaine or 0.5% bubivacaine. Insert the cotton tip applicator into the patient's mare, aiming straight back. Advance until the posterior nasopharynx is reached and the resistance is felt. Leave the applicator there for 10 minutes and then remove. The adverse effects of these the spinopalatine ganglion is nausea, bitter taste, discomfort because of the local anesthetic. And uh, discomfort in the due, due to uh, insertion of the applicator and the nascent throat pain can also is also seen because of the inadequate technique. Uh, the take home message is PDPH may carry a medico legal liability. ADP can result in chronic headaches and back pains, particularly in uh, pregnant patients. And anesthetic procedures with the risk of PDPH require proper informed consent, and epidural blood patch is the gold standard technique to control to treat epidural uh, postural puncture headache. Very happy new year to everybody. Thank you. Srikanth, add a point. Happy new year to everybody. Sir, good morning. <laughs> Happy New Year, uh, everyone. So, Happy New Year, sir. No, sir. Happy New Year to everyone.
सर हैप्पी न्यू ईयर सर मोहन सर हैप्पी न्यू ईयर सर so the same thing sir ante uh, like he mentioned in that electron microscopy uh, clusters la untund sir mana fibers so that longitudinal axis anadi a point valid ga sir ante previously we used to think like uh, uh, along the line of uh, dural fibers separate ayipothayi puncture avvani so a point uh, uh, so it no longer holds good and um, బెవెల్ డైరెక్షన్ అది చాలా అంటే యాక్చువల్లీ వెన్ వీ థింక్ ఆఫ్ దట్ అది చాలా వన్స్ వీ సీ ద ఎలక్ట్రాన్ మైక్రోస్కోప్ పిక్చర్స్ అది చాలా ఈజీ కాన్సెప్ట్ లా అనిపిస్తుంది అంటే ద పీడిపిహెచ్ ఇస్ మెయిన్లీ డ్యూ టు ద హై ప్రెజర్ టు లో ప్రెజర్ ఏరియా సిఎస్ఎఫ్ ఫ్లో అవడం వల్ల మనకు వచ్చే వాల్యూమ్ లాస్ వల్ల ప్రెజర్ లాస్ వల్ల హెడ్ ఏక్ యాగ్రివేట్ అవుతుంది సో ఎలక్ట్రాన్ మైక్రోస్కోపీ స్టడీస్ లో వాట్ దే హ్యావ్ ప్రూవ్డ్ ఇస్ వెన్ క్వింకే నీడిల్ పెడుతున్నప్పుడు ఇఫ్ ద బెవెల్ ఇస్ ఫేసింగ్ అప్వర్డ్స్ సో వెన్ యూ విత్డ్రా దట్ యూ విల్ క్రియేట్ అన్ అవుట్వర్డ్ ఫ్లాప్ అంటే మనం ఒక ఈ కాలమ్ లోకి ఇలా వెళ్ళి వెన్ వీ కమ్ అప్ విత్ బెవెల్ అప్ సో విల్ క్రియేట్ అన్ అవుట్వర్డ్ ఫ్లాప్ ఫ్లాప్ ఇట్ సైడ్ ఓపెన్ ఫ్లాప్ వస్తుంది అండ్ వెన్ వీ గో బెవెల్ డౌన్ అండ్ వీ పుల్ డౌన్ and then the flap is an inward flap so ante lopal nunchi ila flap aye rent create chestam manu so uh, with a bevel up position outside facing flap unnapudu uh, the flow of uh, leakage of csf will be more so that is why they recommend based on electron microscopy studies that um, uh, bevel down position actually helps to prevent pdph also um, యాక్చువల్లీ విటాకర్ నీడిల్ కాజెస్ మోర్ డ్యామేజ్ సార్ ఇది పీడిపిహెచ్ స్టడీస్ లో కూడా ఉంది అండ్ ఆల్సో పెరిఫరల్ నా బ్లాకెడ్ కాంప్లికేషన్స్ లో రీసెంట్ గా అక్కడ గడాక్ లో ప్రజెంట్ చేసిన టాపిక్ అదే సార్ కాంప్లికేషన్స్ ఆఫ్ పెరిఫరల్ నా బ్లాకెడ్ లో కూడా ఇన్ అడ్మిర్ హ్యాడ్జిక్ అది మనకి రీజనల్ అనస్థీష గోల్చాన్ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ హీ ఆల్సో మెన్షన్స్ ద స్టడీస్ సపోర్టింగ్ దట్ యాక్చువల్లీ లాంగ్ నీడిల్స్ మనం స్పైనల్ నీడిల్స్ బ్లాక్స్ వాడినప్పుడు దట్ విటాకర్ నీడిల్ యాక్చువల్లీ కాజెస్ మోర్ డ్యామేజ్ దాన్ ద క్వింకే నీడిల్ ఇట్స్ అప్లైస్ టు సేమ్ టు డ్యూరామీటర్ ఆల్సో సో అందుకనే దీస్ డేస్ దే ఆర్ ప్రిఫరింగ్ మోర్ లైక్ ట్వంటీ సిక్స్ క్వింకే మోర్ దాన్ ట్వంటీ సెవెన్ విటాకర్స్ అవి చేంజ్ చేస్తే సార్ ట్రీట్మెంట్ పార్ట్ ఇట్స్ ద సేమ్ సార్ అంటే శేఖర అన్నట్టుగానే కెఫిన్ కి దెర్ ఇస్ నో సపోర్టింగ్ ఎవిడెన్స్ మనకి అవైలబిలిటీ కూడా కొంచెం కొంచెం డిఫికల్ట్ ఇంతకు ముందు డార్ట్ అనే ఒక ట్యాబ్లెట్ వచ్చేసారు అది బాగా వాడేవాళ్ళు యాక్చువల్ గా కెఫిన్ పారాసెటమాల్ కాంబినేషన్ లోనే అండ్ ఆల్సో ఐ థింక్ హైఫినాక్ పియర్ రెసిక్లో ప్లస్ హోల్డ్స్ గుడ్ ఇనిషియల్లీ అండ్ క్రోసిన్ ప్లస్ అని వచ్చింది ఇప్పుడు సర్ వాల్యూమ్ తక్కువ సర్ క్రోసిన్ క్రోసిన్ ప్లస్ శ్రీకాంత్ ఆ క్రోసిన్ ప్లస్ సర్ క్రోసిన్ ప్లస్ యా అండ్ ఆల్సో అడ్వాన్స్డ్ దాంట్లో సింథెటిక్ ACTH అనలాగ్ ప్రామిసింగ్ రిజల్ట్స్ ఉన్నాయి సార్ బట్ అగైన్ అవైలబిలిటీ వస్తా వన్ నేను అండ్ ఎపిడ్యూరల్ బ్లడ్ ప్యాచ్ యాజ్ హి సెడ్ దెర్ ఇస్ నో పాయింట్ ఇన్ సెకండ్ అండ్ థర్డ్ కి అంత ఎవిడెన్స్ లేదు అండ్ ఆల్సో ఐ డోంట్ థింక్ పేషెంట్ కాంప్లయన్స్ ఆల్సో విల్ బి సో గుడ్ బికాజ్ ఆల్్రెడీ ఆ వన్ వీక్ ఆఫ్ హార్బుల్ సఫరింగ్ ఉంటది ఐ హావ్ సీన్ పర్సనల్లీ ఇన్ మై ఫ్యామిలీ ఆల్సో పీడిపిహెచ్ ఇస్ అ హార్బుల్ థింగ్ సర్ అసలు కనీసం బెడ్ బెంచ్ లో అవలేరు లైక్ అ నైట్ మేర్ ఫర్ దెమ్ పోస్ట్ సర్జరీ ఎస్పెషల్లీ ప్రెగ్నెన్సీలో ఇటు బేబీని చూసుకుంటూ అటు ఆ పీడిపిహెచ్ చాలా సఫర్ అవుతారు సో ఈడిపి ఇఫ్ యూఆర్ డూయింగ్ ఎ బ్లడ్ ప్యాచ్ ఐ థింక్ ఇట్స్ బెటర్ వీ గెట్ ఇట్ రైట్ ఫస్ట్ టైం ఓన్లీ అండ్ ఆల్వేస్ ప్రిఫరబుల్లీ లోవర్ స్పేస్ బెటర్ సార్ బికాస్ ఎందుకంటే మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద కాంట్రాస్ట్ స్టడీస్ హ్యావ్ షోన్ సుపీరియర్ స్ప్రెడ్ దై సో ఆబ్వియస్లీ బ్లడ్ ఆల్సో విల్ గో దే సుపీరియర్లీ ఓన్లీ ఐడియల్లీ లోవర్ స్పేస్ ఆర్ ఇఫ్ నాట్ ఫీజిబుల్ దెన్ ఓన్లీ అట్ ద సేమ్ స్పేస్ దట్స్ వాట్ Okay, three points. Point number one, in was 2007, there was a neurosurgical department paper was there. All PDPH and post-spinal headache, everything is not because of the size of the needle, as you said rightly, the negative pressure. It is a shear effect. The shear effect is the, the ligament, what is there, how much slowly or how much pressure you have put and uh, open the dura. whether you do did with the very small little with the slowly or suddenly so that is the main reason for the uh, pdph is one reason which he has given in the journal number one 
Number two, as you said rightly, the first thing is going to be the blood patch, but uh, that is the reason every anesthesiologist has to do the rounds post spinal 24 hours after once you see the patient ask them. There's a questionnaire is there, around five to six questions are there. So that is the only way to do. And to prevent it, post spinal, there are five lines of uh, standard protocol. Not to use pillow, use more hydration, and uh, don't get up early for this. This kind of things has to be written. And finally, I want to ask one question to all of you up to these three points is, how many of you are using the ultrasound for spinal? Just like okay, two, two cases we have used, sir. Adhikoda uh, for landmark identification only. But um, space identification of talent lay than can. Not, uh, I'm not talking about uh, because, come on, pain, pain management people, when you can identify entire uh, nerves in the body, you cannot identify the space. What I'm asking is, you know, our use of the ultrasound is being increasing day by day, and uh, it's like extended eye sight. What is the PDPH uh, number or ratio you can reduce by using a USG? Can we have some study for some thesis or some uh, PG student? Maybe useful. Dr. Andrada and Chaitanya for next PNB be student. Done, sir, definitely. Study can be done. Because that is the only way to learn and uh, say prove that because nowadays very less number of people are doing regularly epidural and spinal under ESA uh, because the space is bigger. And easy to identify. Rest of the things which have become difficult, they made it easy by using ultrasound. But the easy thing to implement with the ultrasound is not done yet. But thesis content, I think there have to be a supporting paper because Come on, Pitan. When you want supporting paper, when you have original article. Good morning, all, and a very happy new year to everyone. Sir, actually, supporting article undal and rule le do kani supporting article like apote manak thesis complete che dan custom because we need to keep some review articles. We need to find from where. I mean, you make, manak you make review article pankula. You make one study. You make one review article for next year. The patient, the student can use. See, when okay, you, what, original article, original article can be done. No, at least it, it is not have any. Unethical or neither it is going to be not yeah, yeah. given by ethical committee or it is not any practice. No. Same True. thing we are using. We are not accept using ultrasound, not using ultrasound. What is the PDPH rate? What we are trying to see? I don't know. I'm just asking. Is it a viable study or not viable study? It's it's a viable study. It's a viable study. Recently, recently uh, we have come across a case. I think uh, me and Shekhar sir were there. There was a, a female, elderly female. She had uh, lung uh, issues and we had to do uh, orthopedic surgery only under spinal and uh, and she was post-spinal fusion. It was really very difficult. Yes, we should have used ultrasound and yeah, true, true. That can be done actually. Uh, review article can be done. And also, uh, Spino Pantan and Blocky, Mana Rajam, GMR, Karan Manchi, alternate, and uh, uh, he has done quite a good number of uh, cases that experiment also. So, he, uh, that block procedure, uh, actually, Spino Pantan and Block, two, two procedures, standard procedures. One, transnational, uh, that pack, what uh, Shaker has mentioned. Another lateral portion in fluoroscopic guidance law we will do the spin of and ganglion block. But the thing is, uh, uh, even this, this one is very difficult, needs training, and this is actually easier one. 